Oh, what did we do? You can't say we didn't do this. You can't say we didn't try to kill this thing. Oh, put it out. the plastic is melting. Holy crap. Oh, what a treat you guys are in for today. You are gonna be so happy that you're watching this video. I guarantee it. What is going on you guys? My name is Cisco and today we are going to be taking a look at the new Lancer Tactical Gen 3 AEGs. I was giving you a minute to put your hate comment down below. Are you done hating? All right, let's see what Lancer Tactical has done this time around. Now this isn't something I specifically do for Lancer Tactical, but all airsoft companies. I take your comments, your concerns, your requests, and I forward them over to these companies. And again, normally left on red because of probably the language barrier. But when I told Lancer Tactical these concerns of yours, they actually said, sure, yeah, let's do it. Crazy. Now, Lancer Tactical has come a long way. Now, their Gen 1s, eh, no. The Gen 2s, you know, they were decent, mainly for beginner airsofters, but their Gen 3 is looking like a solid mid-tier airsoft gun. And let's go over why that is. Now in front of me is the new Lancer Tactical LT32, which is including the new M-Lock rail system. And it comes in two different flavors, being black and tan. And they come in three different sizes, large, medium, and stay small. Now, if the LT32 series doesn't fit your palette, the other models are still available. So basically, everything from the Lancer Tactical Gen 2 line, they've carried over into the Gen 3 line. Uh, there's just so many options. Too many options. So many. Lancer Tactical, hey, listen, uh, discontinue that key mod rail. No, Nobody wants it. It's a dead meme now. Now, the LT32 model boasts the new M-Lock rail system, which you guys request for. It's clean, it's simple, it's functional, it does the job. It has two QD sling points on the left and right hand side and the monolithic upper rail system. Moving on to the receiver, it is the standard polymer receiver. It's, it's basic, it's clean. It doesn't need anything fancy, right? Now, this is going to be the receiver that's used across majority of the Gen 3 line except for the Evo series. They definitely went overboard on that one. So again, Lancer, simple and clean. Thank you. The key defining features that separate the Gen 3 from the Gen 2 that help you identify it a little bit easier are going to be the nice flat trigger, tasty, the very familiar angled pistol grip. Angled for your grip. Now, this is familiar, like I literally just said with a real firearms company that makes pistol grips, rhymes with PAGMO. Then we have the B5 system style crane stock with the QD points. I literally just realized that it had QD points right now, so that's an extra feature for you guys. Now, talking more about the pistol grip, like I said before, it does have that nicer angle, so when you are shouldering the gun, it actually puts your wrist at a more comfortable position. Instead of it being more harsh like this, it straightens your arm out a little bit more so you don't get as fatigued on the field. And the stock is a slimmer style sock, or crane stock compared to the sock mod style stock. It's not as bulky. It's much more clean. There's still plenty of surface area for you to get the nice cheek weld, but clean. I, I love it. Other features that the LT32 has is the ambi sling plate at the rear of the receiver, the enhanced trigger guard, the basic selector switch and basic mag release. Unfortunately, they're not ambidextrous. Lancer, maybe in the future, keep that in mind. It also has the flip up iron sights that are made of polymer. Now Lancer Tactical for these iron sights, they come on the Gen 2s and they're kind of old. Let's do something with those like you did the M-Lock rail. Let's make them a little bit slimmer, a little bit more low profile, maybe an aftermarket set. I'd pick them up. Now, full disclosure, this is going to be a full polymer build from the receiver and the rail system, but the key elements where it's kind of needed is metal. So the outer barrel, the threads for the receiver, the buffer tube, the trigger, the trigger guard, the dust cover. <laughs> Now, the last defining feature of the Gen 3 models is no more high caps. 
These include the Lancer Tactical 130 round high speed magazine. If you haven't seen our video on these, they feed phenomenally. They can support a DSG. That's insane. Uh, if you don't know how to feed or load a mid cap magazine, basically you take the magazine and a speed loader. Oh, by the way, Lancer Tactical, there's no speed loader out of the box. Add that. But you take the speed loader, you put it to where the hole on the top of the magazine is, and then you just load it up. If you have an Odin speed loader, just insert it, wind it. It's not difficult, guys, it's very easy. Now, the reason why I think this is a mid-tier gun is because it includes that magazine, mid-cap magazine, out of the box without a speed loader. So I'm thinking Lancer Tactical just assumes you already have a speed loader, and it does not come with a battery or charger. Most mid-tier guns, don't come with a battery charger. For some reason, airsoft manufacturers just think, hey, they already have this, so we're not gonna include it. But guys, airsoft manufacturers, listen to me. Don't you think, wouldn't you agree that not all mid-tier players pick up a mid-tier gun? Maybe a beginner that has more of a budget will pick up this mid-tier gun. You can give them more value by including these out of the box. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I'm done. Let's let's wrap this up. <laughs> now you might be thinking, Cisco, the externals are pretty nice, but isn't it just a crappy Lancer Tactical internally? And you're wrong. Lancer Tactical heard you, and they made improvements to the internals as well. Now Lancer Tactical has carried over some of the features from the Gen 2 to the Gen 3, being the Type 4 inner barrel, the rotary style hop-up unit, the same gearbox shell that includes a newer ball bearing spring guide. If I didn't mention it's quick change, but the ball bearing spring guide helps with uh, friction for the spring moving in the gearbox. It also has the same steel gear set, the same steel metal rack piston, uh, the same compression parts, but the other key features that define the Gen 3 from the Gen 2 are the 19K high torque motor and the new Zion Arms Nebula MOSFET. And honestly, this has to be one of the best, if not the best MOSFET out of the box from an airsoft gun. And it's super cool. I'll talk about it right now. Cisco, you sound like a really big shell. Hey guys. It's not a Lancer Tactical MOSFET. Apparently it's a new company called Zion Arms and they paired up with Lancer Tactical to include it in the Gen 3 out of the box. And this MOSFET is freaking cool. I hope they sell it aftermarket because I'd pick a few up. Now it has active braking. It does not have pre-cocking, but in my opinion, pre-cocking is overrated. You can program it to full auto only, semi-auto only, two round burst, three round burst, four round burst, five round burst, and binary trigger. What airsoft gun out of the box with a MOSFET has binary trigger. I'll wait. Now this is the final reason why I think the Zion Arms MOSFET is the best out of the box. It's a standard version two fitment. It's not a proprietary ETU mumbo jumbo where you have to use the proprietary gearbox to work. It, it's completely standard version two compatible. You can take all the parts, change it out. If you don't like the MOSFET, you can change it out. You can install the Gate Titan. You can install the Perun Hybrid, or you can delete the MOSFET completely. But I don't know why you would want to do that because you're downgrading your airsoft gun. The best part about it is it's not a Lancer tactical MOSFET, which means it's not gonna burn out. The Zion Arms MOSFET is actually rated for an 11-1 LiPo up to a 25C discharge rate and is wired to Dean's out of the box. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, Dean's has been the future and I'm glad companies are starting to catch up. I did forget to mention guys that the MOSFET can be programmed through the trigger. You don't need an external programming card or plug it into a computer. You could do it right here with the battery plugged in and the instructions are in the manual. So read the manual. Do I think it's the best MOSFET in Airsoft? Probably not. But is it the best MOSFET out of the box? I think I have to give it to them. All right, guys, we have the Lancer Tactical Gen 3 gearbox broken down in front of me. And the first thing that I want to take note of is subscribing. Hello, what are you guys doing? You think this is a charity, huh? I need to eat five meals a day. So I'm going to need you to hit that subscribe button, okay? Huh? Hit the red button right now. Go ahead and ring the bell to get notified of every time we upload a new video like this one. If you like us and want to support us, go over to airsoftgi.com. Make sure you use the Wombo Combo to get free shipping and all the other goodness, and you get your goodies. I get to eat five square meals, and you get this good content. All right, let's get into this. So, first off, 
basic gearbox shell, like I talked about before, it is Lancer Tacticals that does have the quick change spring system. And as I stated before, it does have the upgraded uh, ball bearing spring guide compared to where it was just a regular spring guide before. So this helps the spring rotate while it's being pushed in and out of, not pushed in and out, but as it's being cycled through the gun and just increases the longevity of the airsoft gun itself. So let's set this aside. Now the compression parts are the same. Uh, they did update the coloring, I guess. So it is of all black um, cylinder, the same air nozzle, uh, cylinder head, tap it plate, and that same, oh, super greased up, that same uh, full metal rack piston as well. Over there, oh, that was actually pretty damn nice in compression. Now we have the regular gear set. This is the steel gear set right here. Nothing too fancy about it. 18 to one ratio uh, there, pretty good out of the box. I mean, they're stock gears comparable to pretty much everything else on the market. The flat trigger right there, which is a standard trigger. There's nothing fancy about it. Uh, no extra bar or anything proprietary about it. And then finally, the Zion Arms uh, MOSFET right here. Now, like I said before, it has the programmability and uh, active braking on there. There's extra grease all over this. I'm just gonna put that right there. But yeah, that is pretty much it. This MOSFET makes the world of difference. This and the ball bearing spring guide just increase the longevity and the performance overall, paired with the 19K motor. And this actually looks very familiar with this blue uh, end bell on here. It's, it's decently torquey, it's not too bad, but it is what it is. Now, another key feature of the gearbox is it's wired to Dean's out of the box, which is a great feature to have. Dean's gives you a better connection um, so you don't have any arcing of the power when you are actually firing the gun. And you guys that are worrying about the performance or if the gun breaks, it has a one year warranty from Lancer Tactical. So if it breaks at all, you, you're covered. As long as you don't modify it, keep it the way it is, during its warranty period, you are good to go. Now, a couple of things that I have some gripes about is Lancer Tactical, there's way too much grease in this gearbox. Lighten up on it. You do not need this much. Tell your guy to just ease off the brush strokes a little bit. And then this one isn't that big of a deal, but the shimming, it was decent. But if Arcturus can get their shimming on lock, you guys can too. Like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Like it's not the worst that I've seen. It's actually pretty good out of the box, but it can be improved. The Lancer Tactical LT32 Gen 3 is chronoing at about 380 to 390 feet per second with a 0.20 gram BB and a rate of fire of about 18 BBs per second with an 11-1 light bulb. Now, one interesting thing is that Lancer Tactical includes a low FPS spring out of the box, so you can downgrade it to the 350-ish FPS limits for indoor fields. You don't see that every day. So I guess Lancer Tactical traded the speed loader for the spring. So it's a little bit more value because the spring is gonna be a little bit more expensive. Trade? Now the Lancer Tactical Gen 3 sounds good on paper, but how does it actually perform? So let's go shoot it. Well, I'm not gonna go shoot it. Kevin's gonna go shoot it. Kevin? What's going on guys? We are out here with the new Lancer Tactical Gen 3s. This one specifically is the LT32 TA10. Basically the M-Lock version that is 10 inches. And um, I've shot this guy a few times, but we're gonna go ahead and show what it looks like on camera. We have kitted it out similar to how we would run it, uh, you know, outdoor gameplay. I do have my chest rig, I got a sling on here, and let's just see how she performs. So we have an 11.1 LiPo in here, about 20C output. Uh, this guy is rated for 25C, so 20C, just about there. And we have their mag that it comes with, I think this is their speed mags i forget what they're called but this is the mag that comes with the gun so we're going to use it and we're going to spam the trigger as we do here we go we have a target about uh, 100 feet i would say let's see how consistent we can nail it right there right on target okay that's really nice we did hit every single shot pretty much right in that center zone. The trigger pull is uh, pretty consistent with 
other triggers on the market. There's no click or anything. It, it does have that like kind of empty uh, squish to it. But once you kind of find it, it, it's almost like an optical switch. Once you find that nice break point, you can really spam the trigger. Yeah, so I'm doing the same technique that I do with like G and G G2H gearboxes, where I put my finger right about where the squishy break is, and then right when I feel the gun fire, I just let my finger go off just a little bit, and then you can just spam feather it as much as you want. I got barely moving my finger. Now another thing that I'll notice is that this gun sounds really nice. Like it almost sounds like it's perfectly shimmed. It sounds fast, crisp, very responsive as well. Like I honestly think this sounds better than the G&G &G guns out of the box. It's such a satisfying trigger pull. Woo. All right, now I think we have to do some full auto. Before we shoot full auto, I did want to notice that the mag has a BB indicator. So as you can see, we're almost out here. You can see that uh, here's the follower and these are the remaining BBs here. So you can just do a quick check to see if you're almost empty. And since we are and we're gonna do full auto, let's do a mag change. And we are using the EPM ones, as you do if you wanna hold a lot of ammo. So let's do a quick mag dump. All right, here we go. Bruh, bruh. Ah, yes. So, we actually have this guy programmed to binary at the moment on the full auto switch. So let me go ahead and switch it back to full auto and I'll show you how to do that too. So since we have the full auto switch set to binary at the moment, we have to switch it back to full auto. All you have to do is start your selector on the full auto and then flip it two times. So once, twice. Hear a little click and a little beep. And now we're gonna cycle through the options. So this is semi-auto, two round burst, three round bursts, four round bursts, five round bursts. That one is binary. And the last one is full auto. We're gonna hold the trigger to select it. And that is confirmed. And now we're in full auto. Let's give it a try. That was amazing. That is a healthy rate of fire fed flawlessly. That pushed out every single BB, no problem. One entire EPM one, 250 rounds. That was amazing. All right, so one thing that is a big selling point of this is that the MOSFET that this model comes with, uh, you are able to program it to a binary option on one of the uh, selectors. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'll just do it real quick. There we go. To that. Okay. That was not what I needed to do. All right. There it is. So binary. Right out of the box. I don't know if that's a little dangerous because uh, people will be abusing it, but hey, it's in there. Woo. Oh. I am scared. I'm scared for other people. <laughs> that's insane. Out of the box too? Oh dear Lord, what have we done? I gotta put this down, it's too, it's too scary. Wow, Kevin, thank you for your insightfulness. Sounds like it's performing like a mid-tier airsoft gun. And I wonder why, huh? But I know you guys don't wanna just see us shoot it. You have all this pent up, boiling, rage, anger inside of you. And we understand that. So we're gonna destroy one of these for you. 
So get your lotion and your tissue and your trash bin handy because you're going to get something out of this. For science. this real quick, drop the stock, plug in the battery, hopefully I don't explode. Oh, I heard, I can hear the programming. Wow! Woo! Wait. Woo! Not like bad. it's brand new. Let's take a look at the damage. This is a little scratch right there. Uh, hand guard cracked right here a little bit. Oh, I didn't do that. <laughs> It's because the tabs are plastic. Yeah, the tabs are plastic. But other than that, that's it. You know, guys, when you're on the field and you're just casually running, then oops. Woo! Mm. I saw a little section come off. Ooh, does look like the receiver. Actually, take a look at this. There's no cracking on the upper and lower receiver. It just went out of place. We can just easily pop that guy back on if we take off the uh, tube right there. Let's take this off. A T-Bot section fell off. Yeah, I saw that. Plug this bad boy in. Don't explode, don't explode. Oh! And... Hey! <laughs> it sounds the same! Oh, once you just realign your upper receiver, it's pretty much a new gun. <laughs> so we're taking it apart to reinstall the upper receiver. Uh, we did notice that there was a crack on the back of the receiver here. One of the tabs that slide into the lower. Um, but the inner barrel and hop-up unit are good. The air nozzle looks good. Uh, I mean... It survived that beating. That's actually really impressive. That was really high too. Yeah, we were at like 15 feet high, I think. I thought for sure we would have busted the air nozzle. But hey, here's what it is. Next test. All right, guys, so we have it reassembled. It is lifting a little bit on the right side, but nothing too crazy. The next test, gonna run it over. You know, sometimes you go to get lunch in the middle of the day at the airsoft field and you forget your gun. Kill me. Oh, with the double wheel. Flattened the handguard. <laughs> it definitely cracked right there. I mean, it is, is polymer, and I don't know how many pounds that car is. Damage to the stock, it just propped off the uh, rubber buffer tube or the rubber plate. Shove this in here. That's fire. It activated. Oh! Oh, it still works. Flattened the flash hider there too, but still works. I think we're gonna have to run it over again. Oh. So he launched it. Definitely significantly more damage. Actually, that looks like it just popped off. It did just pop off. It opened the the uh, plate, but does it lock in? Oh, I don't know. Can I get it in force? I got it in. I got it in. Uh, obviously, significantly more damage. Key mod ripped off. Main question is, does it shoot? I'm kind of scared. I'm kind of scared too. That was rough. Boaz full sent that. I'm just gonna back up, just. It activated. Just for safety. Oh, oh. It was a little screechy at first. Oh, but it sounds normal. Full auto. 
Oh! Wow! Next test! So you split the rail even further, Boaz. Uh, it's split on the other side. Like, it's going almost all the way down. Uh, you bent the uh, <laughs> sling plate right there. More scratched up than it is. Kim, can you hold that real quick? Expect that. The air nozzle is still fine. It's okay. Yeah, it's locked into place. Holy crap. Not the inner barrel, but the hop up unit, inner barrel, it may be bent. I can't tell unless I roll it on something, but it's okay. Holy crap. All right, on to the next test. I can't kill this thing. Oh my God. Oh, it's on fire. Oh, what did we do? <laughs> oh yeah, it's melting. Oh yeah. How long, how long should we let it run for, guys? As long as it takes to kill this damn thing. I say let it. Until it stops. Until it stops on fire. I think it'll just naturally stop. Oh, it smells like barbecue. Do you have any more fuel? Yeah, you want to spray it? Yeah, spray some more. Bruh. Oh, it's hot. It's hot, it's hot. You can't, you can't say we didn't do this. You can't say we didn't try to kill this thing. Oh, put it out. the plastic is melting. Oh crap. By the way, we have water and a fire extinguisher on standby. We just gonna let it take its course? All right. Yeah, let it burn. Usher. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe guys! We're doing this for you. Who's gonna pay for this guy? I got it, okay? So make sure you subscribe. All right, guys. Waiting for it to cool down for us to test fire it, but if this didn't kill it, I don't know what will. All right, guys, we cooked this Gen 3 to a nice medium rare. Actually, it's more well done than anything, but gotta test it. Oh, wow, the buffer too. It's slightly stuck. Ooh, I think we melted it to the point of not being able to rip it off. Oh, oh, oh. That is all kerosene right there. Holy crap. Okay. Put that in for me. Are you sure? Yeah. We have to. <laughs> Cinnamon bruh. It activated. All right, bro. Kim, come over here. Get out of the way. All right, test fire. Oh my God. It's alive. It sounds normal. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's a monster. This for sure will kill it. This is a 14.8 volt, 100 C discharge lipo battery. Now. Show them the back, show them the back. Death. Yeah. And then bam, it's going cross bones, okay? Now, Zion Arm says that this MOSFET is only able to handle up to an 11125C discharge. So the discharge rate is four times what it's supposed to be, and this is one cell higher than an 11.1. I don't know if this has any lipo protection, but we're gonna find out, and this will kill it for sure. Ah! Did I get you? A little bit. Yes! It activated! I'll hold it. I'm kind of scared. I'll be able to rip it off if, it, if anything goes catch Make sure to count the shots. Here we go. One, two, two three. Okay. It actually feels really snappy. Is it? Should I put it in full auto? Do it. Oh God. Let, screw it, let it run. Oh my God. It's 
Spam it on semi like crazy. Hey, doing the semi. Spam it. Back to semi. <laughs> unplug it, unplug it. This thing's. I can't, I can't. Oh my god. I'm done with this video. It's just too much. None of this is staged. Like, this is a live reaction. I, I'm in disbelief. Because theoretically, in theory, this is supposed to kill every AEG out there. Let me tell you something. We tested this on a KWA, on a GNG, on a Gen 2. It killed all of it within like 200 shots of a full auto. Actually, actually, we should have it. We'll, we'll make a second video specifically designed to see how many guns this thing can kill. But this is a AEG killer for sure. And I'm just, I'm gonna time crisis. it. I know what will, if, if anything will kill it, it's gonna be binary. Are you gonna program it while He's it's in this condition? It on the Grim Reaper battery. That should be binary. Binary mode? The motor is getting really, really hot. I'm smelling the plastic. Oh, 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 oh. oh my God. We killed it. All right, we killed it. It took the beating. It took more than what I expected. I thought it would have broken on the drop. It's smoking, you can see it. Yep, it's dead. We killed it. Hey, we killed it. We killed it. We killed it. We killed it. Woo! But ah! it, took, it took dramatically more than what we anticipated. That's freaking insane. And the, the pistol grip is like disturbingly well-preserved after all of that. Like scuffs on the edges, a little bit of broiling marks. Do, do, do you wanna do you wanna open up the Oh god. Oh, oh. Try not to burn myself. Ah, it's hot. Yeah, let, let's not burn ourselves. Just, just shake it until it comes out. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Crap, that hurt. Well, I mean, that, it's, it's plugged in. All right, we can leave it at that. All right, back to the table. One of you lucky winners. <laughs> well, we'll if, if you guys want this, we'll, we'll probably send it out to you guys. Hey, I'll do it. Yeah, bet. Wow, wasn't that just wonderful? I'll give you a minute to go ahead and clean up your desk. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, after all that was said and done, you might be questioning, Cisco, how much do the Lancer Tactical Gen 3s cost? Now, the Lancer Tactical LT32 Gen 3 retails for $215 at airsoftgi.com. And that's for all LT32 models. And you can use the Wombo Combo for free shipping and rewards points. At $215, that's right at the mid-tier airsoft gun price range. That's comparable to the classic Army Mark 16s, the Polymer Arcturus guns. It's well underneath the cost of a G&G &G CMF 16. And I think this might be the better value because compared to classic Army and Arcturus, you have more upgradability. For those of you who are pinching pennies, Lancer Tactical has released more models of the Gen 3 in more basic forms and starting at 188 bucks. So you can get all of the features of the Gen 3 series in a more basic M4 platform. And this is great for all of you gun builders out there. You have solid internals and you can just upgrade it externally to whatever you want it to be and save money that way. What more can you ask for? All right, you guys, thank you for bearing with me through our overview of the Lancer Tactical Gen 3 LT32 series. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Subscribe for more content. We upload every Wednesdays and Fridays and live stream on Thursdays. Support us directly by going over to airsoftgi.com and picking up all your airsoft goodies. Supporting them supports us, allows us to break more guns in the future. If you like that, hey, we might be doing a giveaway soon too. And Lancer Tactical, Gen 3 AKs, yeah? Yeah? All right.